everyone, welcome back to my messy shop in my 1930-something Atlas 12-inch lathe. We're going to be doing a little machining thing today. Uh, let me get you turned around and zoomed in and show you what we're doing. Okay, as some of you will recognize, this is the business end of a tattoo machine. The needle comes through here, comes out the end, and that's where the pokey bit goes. So what I'm going to be making is this tip. Now these are available. If you look on eBay, you can get them from China for about a buck a piece. But the artist that I'm working for in this case, he likes these. These were made by a specific guy and he can't get them anymore and he just likes everything about them. And you can see that little black line there at the tip is actually where the needle has worn through after 20 years or so of use. You can also see in the tip here that the bottom part has kind of ovaled out and it's almost an oval now because there'd be um, a band across it to hold the needle down so it rubs on the bottom so it took out that area plus caused that little groove. So he wants some new ones, but he wants these. And he can't get these, so I'm gonna to try to make some. Now, these are 316 stainless. All the cheap ones you get from China, well, a lot of them now are plastic and disposable, but even if you get metal ones, they're all 304 stainless. And he said he's had some cheap ones that actually rusted in the autoclave. Oh, so first, I did a dry run with aluminum, just to make sure I had the proper tooling and everything. And I got all the dimensions right. I hadn't cut out that groove yet, but I just didn't want to reset up my lathe. So it all turned out pretty well. I did this all with the fore jaw, and I'm going to get a collet chuck because you can see I'm not exactly centered on the tip there. That's just because it was hard to indicate that tiny little thing in a four jaw chuck. Especially on aluminum that I just cored out and could now be easily smashed. So, zoom you back out. You also should recognize these bags. So, in picking out a material, I decided to get just the right outside dimension and put it in a collet chuck so I didn't have to do any outside turning. I could get precision ground. This is not. So this is just regular 316. And this is, at McMaster they call it easy to machine 316. It's actually a proprietary, what do they call it? Now I'm going to have to look it up. But it's a proprietary mixture. It's supposed to be easier to machine. But it costs more than twice as much. So my question is, is it worth it? If I break a couple of inserts or bits trying to machine this, then this is clearly worth it. If I don't really have any trouble doing this, then it's not probably worth it. So I just wanted to try it out. So I got a little piece of both, got them shipped here overnight, and I'm just going to try turning both and see if the difference is worth it. And then I can also share that information with you guys if you're in a similar thing and you're trying to weigh the, the difference in cost. I mean, at, at this size, it's not that big a difference. You know, I think I'm going to end up using about six feet of this, and I'm going to make 30-something tips for him. And that's going to be for several artists, not all for him. But I think it was like a difference of 20 bucks or 40 bucks. So, you know, not a big difference. But if you need to get this in, you know, one or two inch or something diameter, it gets real expensive. This is only 5 sixteenths. So, I'm going to try turning both of these on my crummy little lathe and see what happens. Okay, here we are at the lathe. I've got the regular 316 stainless chucked up in here. The first thing I was curious of is just how high-speed steel would do cutting it. 
Uh, everything I've read about how to machine 316, of course, it's professionals, not hacks in the shop like me. So they're saying, oh, use this grade of carbide and these speeds and these feeds and this, you know, and I only have, I think, two feeds I can get by changing gears, but I always leave one because changing gears is a pain. So I have one feed. I have a few speed options, but I don't know what they are. I've calculated them roughly. So, you know, all that speeds and feeds and stuff is not something that applies to me. Also, insert-wise, I have one bit that takes carbide inserts. I have a few inserts for it, but I've never really had very good luck, and I think it's just because it's a weird, you know, it was, again, I like most of my stuff, I got it in a box of junk at an auction, so I don't, you know, it might be a weird angle, it might be a weird grade of insert, I don't know, but I use high-speed steel for most of my stuff. Nobody running a production is going to use a high-speed steel bit, obviously, but I'm just curious to see how it works. So I've got you clamped onto the lathe bed. It's the only way I have to get any uh, filming of this, so I apologize. It's probably going to vibrate around, but until I start getting some of that sweet YouTube ad revenue money, uh, <laughs> I don't have an amount for this that doesn't vibrate. So, I got it all oiled up. I've got it indicated in to a, within about four tenths. Uh, eventually, like I said, I'll have a collet and that'll make it a little easier. But in the meantime, this is what I've got. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna set that as my zero. Now we'll go in five. seem to cut just fine. I'm going to try going in 10. That's a good finish and everything. I'm gonna try going in about 13 thou and see what happens. I'm kinda surprised this is going so well. was ugly. I think I got quite a bit of deflection here. Okay, I've got a brazed carbide tool in there now. And I dialed in about 10. We'll just see if it does anything. I don't have very high hopes for this. Did not like that. And here's my one insert type tool. I don't even know what it is. It's square. wasn't too bad. 
I think I was getting the best finish from the high speed steel, though I suspect I would be sharpening it a lot. Let's put in that easy to machine 316 and see what happens. Okay, braised carbide, same thing. 10 thou. Not like that. Let's try my mystery insert. That is atrocious. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can clean up that mess with the high-speed steel. This isn't scientific. I'm using the carbide stuff I used is it's been used anyway. I, I don't it shouldn't be that dull. I haven't used it very much, but it's working like total garbage. Uh, the high speed steel is working awesome. I'm gonna try to take a 15 thou bite with the high speed steel. See what happens. I know I'm sure it's gonna deflect a lot, but we'll see. This is a spring pass, we'll see how much deflection there was. That's considerable. When I have a collet chuck, I won't have it sticking out as far, so that should help. I'm going to try to go in 18. This is a big bite for this lathe. Yeah, no way. One last thing I want to see is how well this drills. Because a lot of the operations of this is going to be drilling, and especially this number 53 bit is going to have to go through the end of that. I'll order some that are Uncoated high speed steel or maybe TIN coated, I'm not sure. This one is black oxide coated, which is not ideal for a stainless. I probably also don't need a half inch capacity chuck for this. But I'm just gonna see how this goes. This is the easy to machine stuff. I did not spot this with a center drill. drilling just fine. It feels like 1018 or something. I'm gonna try the regular stainless. Okay, I got the standard 316 stainless in here. Again, I didn't bother to indicate it, so there's gonna be some run out. I didn't center drill it, so maybe I'll break the bit. We'll see. seem to drill.
real fine. And as usual, I'm ready to make a video. The neighbor starts mowing the lawn. So here we go. The 316 and the easy to machine 316. At this point, I really didn't couldn't tell much of a difference. The research I was doing, it was saying that, oh, this stuff's worth it because you can speed up production. You know, if you can go twice as fast, get twice as many parts out. I mean, I don't know if you can go twice, but as an example, you know, then in theory, you're doubling your profit on the labor. Whereas if you try to speed up this, you're going to start breaking bits and inserts and things, and you're going to end up spending more money. Me, I'm doing this mostly for fun. I'll go at whatever pace the lathe tells me to go. Uh, I'm only making like 30 of them. I already know I'm not going to make, you know, machinist money on this. I'm just hoping to make enough profit to buy myself a collet chuck. That's really, you know, I'm basically just doing this job for a collet chuck. So I have to say at this point, for what I'm doing, it's not worth it. On my crummy little lathe, I mean, it turns everything equally terrible, so. More study is required, but at this point, is this fancy, easy to machine stuff worth twice as much or more than twice as much as regular 316 for a home gamer on an 80 year old lathe? I don't think so, but stay tuned.